Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to the weekly outlook. Um, today, we don't have any special topics, so I'll start immediately with the charts. And I will try to do some daily charts for you during the way. So let's go. Dollar index, still upside. We've broken the downtrend line, right? We've broken the downtrend line that we were in. And we're going up. Now, the question is, is this the move? Is this the impulsive move that is going to go up all the way to the top? And we don't know that as yet because the correction could be much more complex. It always could be much more complex, but that doesn't stop you from trading, right? Let, 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 I think what some traders are getting confusing is that they will say, oh, well, you can always say it's making a, a different structure. No, we don't just can always say it's making a different structure. What we say is we look at this structure that it's making now on the lower time frame, and is there a trade in it? And there may be a trade to buy here, now, the question would be, is this trade long-term or is it short-term? And if we have a long-term forecast on it, we try to keep the trade. Now, if we're wrong about it, what if it's going to make a more complex structure? Something you wouldn't know. But then you get out of the trade and then you look for a separate trade in a different direction. That's it. That's just simple as it is, right? And you keep doing that day in, day out. If you're in a long-term trade and it breaks out and it's going to make that long-term forecast, well, congratulations. You have a very good trade going for you. That is what trading is about. So this is going up. Remember, we looked at this structure. We, we break out. We are going. They're making another small correction here, which means you can expect one more up. At least for now, one more impulse up. And every impulse up will tell us whether this eventually will change into a structure that is going to go all the way to the 270. It's climbing pretty slow right now. I can't say that they're climbing pretty fast. You can see that you're, gonna, you're making a corrective structure here. And that means you can look for one more up when they break, right? You had one here, they break upside. Same in the euro, right? Eventually, the euro broke out. The divergence was clear in the four hour. You had divergence within those two, right? They broke. They're going down. Same thing. You can probably see one more down trade for today. So if you're asking me what is a trade for today for euro, I say look for a sell setup. I'd look for one more. This is your one, two, three corrective structure. It's going down very nicely. How far would this go? Well, that's a big question because you have divergence in the chart, as you can see, right? There's divergence. That means we may not go very far. But can you take the trade? Yes, you will take the trade. And the question is, how far will it go? Well, you can always, I will always tell you, remember, fifth for the target. I would look for the 270 at the bottom here. And if they don't go to the 270, you have a protective measure at the top there, right? You have a stop somewhere where you think you should get out of the trade. So if you get in the trade here and it comes only to here and start to go back, you can just move to break even, take you out to break even, pull back, you start to buy. That's the whole difference. You don't have to worry. In anticipation that this thing could turn, yes, that's okay. We can see that this may turn because we have divergence, but that doesn't stop you from selling, right? Trading. Trading is a whole complex. It's not just simple putting a trend line, right? Or buying a breakout. It's understanding how far can it go? What's, what's the structure? This structure right now does not tell us it's going to go very far, but we still take the trade and we see how far it goes, right? Remember, you only have control over one single thing in the chart. That is how much money you're willing to lose. That is how much money you're putting risk in the chart. And that is what you need to control. If you looked at the money management the webinar I did, you will learn that that's the only thing you can control. And that means if you can control that and your win-loss ratio is good, you don't have to worry. No one trade should bother you. So you take the trade every time, right? It's recording, yeah. Pung. Pung kind of going up sideways, which is what I said you should move to break even. It's going very slow. If you look at the candles, they're going very slow. And when candles do like that, I'm a little worried that there is no momentum in it. So I would move the trade like the break even if you're in. If you're going, wait for a problem. They could pull back to this level and then go, which would give us something like one, two, three, and then go. So the possibility of that exists, right? That means if you're in the trade, what you do is you move it to break even. If you got out of the trade and you don't like it where it is, then what you can do is wait for it to go. It will make a flag and then you buy the break of the flag. Right? I'm expecting Pong to go tag the daily high. They don't always tag the daily high as we have seen in the previous move, right? Remember, we were also expecting this to go tag the daily high. These are flat patterns. Flat patterns can break the top. The C wave can break the top of the A. It cannot, sometimes it doesn't break the top of the A. Let's just take, I want to grab this one and it's not coming. Come on. Oh, yep, yeah, that one. You see, 
this is an ABC structure, ABC, but not every time the C waves go above the A, but we will make the forecast as if it's going to go every time because you can't forecast that it's not going to go there because that means you will start selling very early if you think you're making a flat where the C will never go above the, uh, the A, right? So you rather wait and be late in the cell rather than be early in the cell because you will lose, right? So let, let's, let, they'll take you out if they go break the top. So I'm expecting this to go break the top and then turn to the downside, go to the top and then turn to the downside. So that is a trade. This would be the big trade you don't want to miss, right? And it's coming very soon. But first, I'm expecting them to go back to the top. So do we have something in the chart that says it could go? Yep, I think this looks like it could go. We just have to wait to see if it's going. If you buy this, put it to break even. If you're out of the trade, wait until it gives you a flag and then take the trade. There's a good chance that this may pull back a little here and then probably go. If you get a flag like this, perfect. You buy this and you're looking for that trade, right? It's that easy. Sometimes they go, sometimes they don't. So you just wait and see what it's doing. Aussie, definitely some more upside. Very small trade, as you can see, there's a small trade coming in the Aussie here. When they hit that top, then we will see the structure works. Remember this one? Structure works well, right? They do work well. You can check that from the top coming down, that the structures do work well. The anticipation of what the structure will do is very close. We, act, we are anticipating the same here. We are anticipating a one, two, three-wave structure, right? Now, after, if they had broken this low, I would say this is going up 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 if this if we're breaking that low this would be going up all the way but we didn't break the low and because you didn't break the low there's a chance that you can still be in the corrective structure which means you can make a five wave structure you can make one two three four five and then go right that is a known structure that exists now i'm not expecting them to do that we will see when they come here but I would be looking for that buy setup because just in case they break out, I want to be in the buy. It's not the best trade at the top there, but I just in case this is going to break out, I want to be in the trade because when, if and when they break, they'll be going very violent. So when you come to the four hour, you can see that we made a correction here. Same here, this C wave, we were expecting to do something like a one, two, three. They didn't do that. They give you a smaller correction here, go. You got a smaller correction here, you go. Watch for this trade here, not a bad trade. And if they break out, it becomes a very good trade. So let's see. Any news event can be used to do that, right? They can use any news event coming to break out. You got a nice flag in the making here. Expect this to come down some more. You can see that possibility already. Come down some more and then go back up. So you'll probably want to buy somewhere here, right? Two ways you can buy here. If this comes down here, wait for it to break out. Buy the breakout. If they don't, put an entry order above the top. I don't know how fast it's going to go. Right, so there are two ways you can do that. I hopefully that it comes down. I want it to come down, then I have a better entry and with, with a better risk to reward. When they come to this stop, I'll just move my stops, move my you know, probably if I get in at this level here, if I get in somewhere here, I'll probably put my stop here and see what happens when they get there. They either come back, take me out, I look for a cell setup, or they go straight through the top, and I'll never get out of that trade at least not for the next week or two, right? That's it, that's what trading is about. You make the plan, you make the decision, you see what it's going to do, you understand how the structure will behave, and then you go for it, right? What if this is one of those C wave that never go beyond the A wave, right? Remember that, like the Pong, then this thing is gonna take off pretty fast. If not, we will be coming back here for a triangular pattern and then go up, right? So let's see, take that trade. You should take the trade, and you should take the trade every time. Regardless, win or lose, you take the trade. That's the whole thing. You're a trader, right? You take these trades. Your win-loss ratio is good. Take the trade. If you're getting bad win-loss ratio, whatever you're doing is wrong. This is a nice sell setup. So remember when I was telling you guys about the euro Oz going up and everybody was freaking out? How can the euro Oz go up? The euro is, I'm uh, sorry, the, the Aussie New Zealand is going to take off. How is going to do that? Everybody, well, Aussie and New Zealand move in the same direction. See what they're doing? They're not moving in the same direction. And you want to see what? Look at the Aussie New Zealand, what it's doing. It's not moving in the same direction. Is this news? Any one of you think this is news? No. By the way, this is where we got in on the trade. See? This is no news event anymore. We were expecting this trade to go like, since when? 
I think all of you around here know since when we were expecting this trade to go, right? So you've got your impulse here. You've got your one, two, three correction. You've got another smaller impulse in there. You've made your correction. This trade is coming to the top here. And that's the minimum when it gets to the top because if they break out, we are coming somewhere here. That's a hell of a trade. Now it doesn't go in one straight line, right? But can you keep the trade? Can you keep the trade for a longer move? Sure you can, look at that moving. That's just one, one candle after the other going up. By the way, how many of you in this trade? We actually took this trade live in our trading room. I am not in this one, I'm in the Euro New Zealand. We had a choice. In the newsroom, we, we, you take either the Euro New Zealand, the Euro, the Aussie, Aussie New Zealand, or the New Zealand dollar. Some people took two. I took one. Basically, I just put all my, my, my risk that day on the Euro New Zealand. So I'm in the Euro New Zealand. It's, it's the same trade we were looking for. Just four people in it, except these are not my traders. All my traders I know who are in, right? But you guys should be in it. That's the point because we've been talking about this trade for, for a very, very long time. Watch it. Don't miss the trade. This is a perfect breakout. This was the breakout. They got to pull back and they're going there, right? So you can't miss these trades. Really, really, really good entry. We got that very nice there, right? Oh, you're in the unit. So you see, these are the trades we'll be talking about. Remember I'm saying these trades had two big moves to go, right? That you when we the thing is when we see those structures on a daily, they take time to form. And when you see them, you start understanding, okay, this is a trade I want to be in. So this is a good trade. Actually, it's breaking again. So if this takes off today, it's gonna to be really nice. But buying this little piece at the top there becomes risky. You rather wait for a deeper pullback like this. Let it go. It will make a deeper pullback and then you get in the trade here rather than get in the trade at the top there, right? So if you're not in this trade, you probably want to wait some more. Yeah, wait for the retracement. Don't jump into them, okay? Right? So let's go. Come back to it. The, 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 it's, it's, it's how the chart moves. There's no correlation in the market. Aussie and New Zealand will not go in the same direction, right? They don't always have to go in the same direction. This is a good sell setup, by the way. You don't want to miss this trade. So how far would this go? This could go like that. It could go like this and then turn for a deeper correction, which means you will go for a break-even trade. When you go, it goes in the profit, starts to turn. You probably move the break-even or you live with a small loss on the trade, right? But I think it could go. This could go big time to the downside. So if this is coming down, we are expecting it to retrace this, get back to this low. Look at all the sharp moves down there, right? So we're expecting this to get back to about the low. So you can see if you get in the trade and keep it, right? And there's a nice consolidation already in this. Very big flag in the one hour. So the breakout is a good trade. You probably want to take it. USD CAD. CAD looks like we might get that one more up. It's not going down. And if it's not going down, then it's likely going to go back up but it's going to be a different structure, right? This is one up. You're gonna look at probably at a one, two, three here, and we may get that one more up here before they go down. I would not be surprised. If that happens, we'll all be buying. We're gonna have a more complex structure that is a one, two, three wave. This whole piece that is three wave is, is over. That's a three wave structure of its own. This is one, two, three, and we thought this was gonna be the downside. Well, they could make it much more complex than that. So right now you want to probably look for cat upside and this is part of the corrective structure upside and then the downside. And we wait to see this structure is not giving me hope that it's going to go down. This We know these type of structures. When we see them, they normally turn to the upside, right? You can see the divergence and everything. So we'll be looking for this to go up today. Today, tomorrow, maybe this week. If it crawls down slowly, it's not a good trade. We are in the cell. We took it off. It's not a good trade. It's moving very slow. I mean, look at this thing moving. It moves a little, correct, correct. That's not how you want to trade. That's the, the headache. So we got out of it. Just waiting to see whether we get the upside. Swiss kind of going up slowly, right? Broke out there. So they're going up very slow. They're making kind of a corrective structure here. I don't think it's ready to go. I don't think this is ready to go. You may get this up here and pull back some more before they go. I'd like to pull back from here. This would give you a better trade. Right, they like this pullback here. You either get the trade from here or you get the trade from here. So probably wait for a little pullback there. USCN, yen broke out, made a spike, didn't go anywhere very much. 
that means that you're going to expect a deeper correction very soon. Even if they spiked up one more, spike up, they're going to make a deeper correction before they go. You can see the divergence already coming. So, four hour, we're breaking this structure. Remember that? We said this is going to turn. This one here was going to turn because we're completing a W, X, Y, X, Z pattern. Nothing new. We were looking at this pattern for a long while. When it was breaking this trend, everybody was freaking out that this is going to go up. I said, no, watch for a one, two, three structure to come down. And that is important. It's not about a trend line, right? If you put this trend line here and you were here, I'm pretty sure you're thinking, oh, this thing is going to go, right? No, it's not. Because it's not the trend line that is important. It's the structure that is important. And the structure at that point didn't tell us it was going to go. The structure said you're looking for a very likely one, two, three, and then down. Complete, and now you can go up. Now we're looking for upside. So on the upside, maybe I would not get in here. If you're in, if you're in from this low, which is from this area here, if you're in from here, which was a buy setup we had, if you're in from there, that's okay. You keep the trade. If you're not, let it make a deeper correction, then you get in. The Euro Yen on the other hand, let me go to the Euro Yen. The Euro Yen on the other hand is the one, remember this buy here? We would start looking at this buy early. We're in this buy, right, from this breakout. Remember from this breakout, we're in that buy. Now, you can either put your stops here or put your stop at break even. If this goes down back one more lower, we'll buy again. We'll be taken out, but we would look for buy setup again, right, if they go back. Not and expecting them to go. So I'm expecting this to probably do that. You can look for a small breakout of this, this smaller flag here. If they make a smaller flag here, right? We can look for a buy setup and a break of that. I'm not expecting them to go down. They can go down. We know they can do that. If you look at the entire structure, when this move made that up move, they pull back almost to the bottom and then they went up back. When this pull, they make pull back to the top and then they came down. When this do that, they came back pretty much low and then went up. We're not looking for this to come low. It could, but we're expecting it to actually stay right in there and go. So if you got taken out of the trade, look for a chance to get in back, right? Look for a chance to get in back this trade. Don't miss this trade, guys. This trade is going to be huge. I mean, this is easy. If you can't see that this thing is gonna go up, you better stop trading. I mean, literally, if you, if you see a pattern like this every time, and you, you see the direction they go. Every time you see a pattern like that, every time you see something like this, they go down. Every time you see something like that, they go down. This is not hard to see, right? This is not difficult to see. You just can see it. You don't need to know anything about wave structure and, and, and become an analyst and anything. You just need to watch the charts. And every time you see something like that, they go do that, right? Every time you see one, you can pull the charts and go back 1,000 charts. And every time you see something like this, in an uptrend, they go up. Every time you see something like this in an uptrend, they go up. That's pretty easy. When you see it in an uptrend, it should go up. One in 10 will not go. You take all the trades. 90% will go. That's easy. Now, if you can get it from the bottom, but that is the difficult part, right? Not just taking the breakout, but getting it from inside, from the low, which is from here. If you can get it from here, Perfect. You take it from there, they come, they take you out, you take it again because they will go back up. You re-enter the trade. The, that does not change the direction. I don't think the direction of the trend is changing, but a consolidation is happening. Now, if the consolidation takes you out, you wait for it to finish and then you re-enter the trade to go again. You must have a strategy to do that, which means you have to understand what consolidation is making, how it's making that consolidation, where it's going to end, and when it's ready to go. If you understand all of that, you need to put a single trend line and you will see the trade. We've been tracking this trade all the way, the way up and then the way down, and it's perfect, right? You know, people like to say, oh, these, these wave patterns don't work. It's just a guesswork and all of that. We've been tracking this thing all direction. As a matter of fact, you see me post it from here, but we have been tracking it from here going in our class. We'll be tracking every movement of that. So you only see me post this up, this down, and then that up, right? So we got the up. It stopped there. We got the down. It stopped here. It's going up. You think wave patterns don't work? Really? You got to be really good to guess one, 
to three directions and guessed all three correct. Right? You can't guess this stuff, guys. You got to know the patterns and know how they behave. This is not something you can guess. This is not a news event. If the news is good, it's going to go. If it doesn't go, well, then it's bad sentiment. Right? That's not even guessing. That's just making excuses. Right? So let's go. Watch this trade. It's good. If it's doing what we think it's going to do, then it will continue to do what we think it's doing. That means you need to follow the trade and get in. So let's go back. Uh, we put on this because we have a lot of um, traders who trade it now. And it's kind of like looking downside, but the downside is very, very, very short lived. So probably wait for it when it starts to break to the upside. It's not the best trading. Now, it was a nice trade to the downside we took. Aussie New Zealand, we're looking for, ah, sorry, Aussie uh, Euro Oz, we're looking for long term upside on this trade. It's at a low. That means you want to get this trade also from the low if it is going to go up. If it is going to go up, you want it from the low. So you go to the four hour and you say, is it at the low? Well, not as yet. Can it go some more low? What if this thing does something like that? I don't care. You see, based on my analysis, I'm not looking for a sell. So if it goes down, I will miss the sell, but I'm not losing anything. I think traders, a lot of traders get this wrong. I post an analysis and I said, I'm looking for a buy setup when it breaks, right? It doesn't break and it goes and it's, oh, you got it wrong. So I'm not here to be right or wrong. I'm here to make money. When the trade does what, I'm, what I expect it to do, I make money out of it, right? It's not about me. It's not about my ego being right or wrong. I'm here to make money. And I make money when I get it right. When it doesn't go the way I expect, okay, let's wait and see. Let's see what did I miss on the structure. What we do is forecasting. We're using the amount of trade, the amount of uh, the information we have now to make a forecast for the future. Now, we may be wrong in the forecast, not that the structure doesn't work. It's because we are expecting something and it turned out to be something else. And that is okay. We understand our limits in it. We know what is it. So when we do this, we, under, we know what to expect. So we're not looking for sell opportunities. We're looking for sell opportunities here. They didn't turn out well for us. You know, this was going very slow. It wasn't going. So we just ignore it. We're looking for this to turn and go to the upside. So what we wait for, it has to break out, make a flag, and then we'll be in that trade to the upside. It's not breaking as yet. It's not making any flag as yet. So we're just ignoring it. There is a short sell set up in the making here. You can see that. We're not interested in this. I'm not personally interested in that trade because this risk to reward is no good. That's not the trade you want. It has to break this structure and then I will come back to it and I will be interested in the long-term downside. I don't see that in the structure right now. I, what I see is a long-term upside. So I'd let it finish that move to the downside break and then we want this move up. We want this move up. Remember, we were buying here. We want that move up. We didn't get this because that actually happened pretty fast. We were buying here because we wanted that move up. Every time they come to this level, we would look for buy setups. Simple. So let's see if we get it. You were in New Zealand. We were already in. We were looking for the same thing. Remember, we were not interested in the sell. We we're interested in the buy. And there's a specific reason for that because when you look at a daily chart, what it's telling you is that this could actually do that. This is the trade. See that impulse there? See the correction down there? This could likely go there. That is a trade we really want. Not the small one we are in now. We are in that small one, but we are trying to see if we could keep it and survive without it taking us out and break out of this structure. Because if they break out of this structure here, that's a long-term trade. That's a trade for a couple months to come. We are not going to take it out. We will stay with it. We will add to it. We'll put more trades on and we will let it ride. Because when this starts to go, there is no pulling back. It's going to go, 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 go. And if you're not in, you're likely going to watch it go all. Four hour. We're in the trade and this one is going good. I think it's not going bad. It's going good. So those of you who got in, well done. Watch this. If this goes very slow, if this goes very slow like this, you know, and it starts to curve like this and at the top there we see divergence, right? That means we could get one more down. If you look at the four hour structure, there's a possibility for that one more down. We're not expecting it, but it could happen. We weren't expecting this one to come down back. 
but it happened. So we got taken out of the trade right here. We're in this trade here, so we got taken out of the trade. The same thing will happen here. This comes here, start to go. We'll probably move our stop and let it take us out there if it comes back one more. So we've got one, we've got two, we've got three. We could get four and we could get five and then they could go. We're not expecting it though. We are hoping that this is the one that is going to go. Well, we're in the trade, so we are hoping that it's going to go. But if it just comes to the top and start to show sign of a downside, we'll let it take us out. We would decide whether we want to sell it, maybe not. And then we we'll look for the downside. Right now, you're looking for a buy set up to the top of the trend, right? Well, it's you should be in the trade already a long time ago, even from this distance. EuroCAD, EuroCAD is a very nice daily structure. So let me show you guys. Let's start with a weekly because I think you're gonna like this. It has some very nice long-term structure in it. So we've been looking at this structure. You got a nice impulse you got a pullback you got another one you have a pullback here and we've been tracking this all the way remember from the top there the, it, this piece was a little mess right it made a very very complex structure in there but there's a very nice structure in here if they break you want the trade to this level i'm on a weekly chart don't forget you want that trade because that trade could break out that trade could actually go back up here right giving you a one two three four five wave structure all the way to the top there so if they're going to go back up, put it in the daily. And you take this trade, if you get this trade, and you put it to positive, and then they go back up, take you any correction would be a buy setup. This structure here has one more up possibility. See this here? This could be either three wave, one, two, three, or it could be four and it could be five before it comes here. So if they break this structure here, you can look for a sell setup for this here. If they go back up, we may or may not get the buy, but we would look for the sell from the top here. Right? See? It's pretty easy. So let's see. Euro yen. We're already this. I already show you. We're looking for upside euro chief. This one needs to break the low. Oh, all, uh, okay, we were using this today. That is why nothing is in it. So take this off, put this here. We're looking for them to break the low and then turn to the upside. Let me just put back where the low is. Stay out of this for a while. It's not a very smooth trade, but we were expecting them to come back here, break this low, and then go back up, right? So we've, we've been tracking this structure here for a while, this five wave structure. I don't think they're gonna come all the way here, but they will come and break this low before they go back. So stay out of that for a while. Europong, Europong is breaking out, all right? Okay, let me take this off. Not supposed to be there. So remember this cell setup from here and people were freaking out. I said, keep your stop above the top. Well, if you took the trade off here, it's okay because some of our traders took it off here because we were just waiting for it to break and now you can re-enter the trade. It's looking more downside. We are heading for this target first and then we'll see what happens there. This would be the target first and then we'll see where it goes from there, right? If it gets there, but it's moving very nice. On the bigger time frame, there's a nice three wave structure to look for here. One, two, and we could possibly get to even lower here, right? Breaking this low. So if you're in the trade, it's a good trade, okay? So let's see. Pung Oz, let's see what this is doing. Looking a little upside right now on the four hour, if you're looking for a trade setup, it's going up, we don't have a buy setup in it. That's the problem. There is nothing in the chart that says we can buy it there. So we'll have to skip this trade. We don't, we, maybe if they break this stop and then turn back to the downside, we get a sell setup, All right? I'll be looking mostly for the sell setup, not the buy setup. Pong New Zealand, you probably wanted to be in this trade, which is you should be, All right? We've got a one, we've got a two, and we're going up for a three. Let's see how far they go, All right? And they could definitely come pretty far. They could come back all the way to retest this stop. See that? A one, two, three wave structure. So if you're in the trade, you're doing well. If you're not, you have to wait. There was a nice pullback there for a buy. 
All the New Zealand trades are going to move. Pang Chief is a buy setup if you took the trade. It's, it's very slow, though. It's good. It could go very slow, but it's a good trade. And the reason a good trade is that you got a breakout. It's classical for us. You got a breakout, you make a nice flag, you're ready to go, right? So look for this trade, right? It's almost gone. Not Well, not really gone, but you just have to, you'll have a, a, a little, your risk to reward will be less than if you're in the trade already, right? Pang Yen, stay out of this one for a while. We don't know if this structure is complete, so stay out of it. Let them break out first. The Pang Yen is the only one you want to break out first and make a flag before you buy. Punkad, you definitely want to be in a buy in this one. You want to be in a buy in one place, either when they break this structure here, or if they come back to the low and then go. Either way, this has a 90% chance of going up. Remember we said every time you see them, they go, let me show you one very similar to that. Move down, pattern. Guess what we're looking for in that trade? If you go back, I think there should be a cell set up posted in that trade. If if it's if it wasn't posted, then that would be funny. Oh, yeah, looking for a cell set up. See, what are you looking for? You're looking for a cell set up. Did it get to be longer? So let me show you how we how we manage how we do this trade. Our cell set up didn't come anywhere in here because it never broke. It came, didn't break. Some of us sold it from there. Got break even, sold it back from here, sold it here, and we're in that trade. Sell it here again, right? See, that's how you do it. So it be not because we assume that this will break, it has to break right then. That does not change the structure, right? It does not change the structure. You're still looking for a sell setup, right? We're looking for a buy setup. Didn't go the first time, didn't go the second time. It's still a buy setup. That did not, that does not change the structure, right? It does not change the structure. This still will go up. Even if they come back down here once more, this is still an upside. I, actually, I want them to come back one more. Because if they come back one more, I get a much better trade from the bottom here going up. I may not get it. I may not get the comeback. I'll have to take the breakout. Cadian, stay out of this. Aussie N, there's nothing happening in them right now. Aussie N, you may be getting a sell setup possibility. Not the best trade I'm going to tell you right now. Not the best trade. It may just be just a correction here and then go back up again. Aussie did this, did that, did this. Remember, we weren't too keen what that is doing. Stay out of it. If you get a flag here, you can look for a buy. The possibility is a very short-term sell for a downside. It's not there as yet, but possible that you can come down back. They can come down back all the way because this structure normally shows you downside. When you see structure like this, when you see structure like this, it's downside, right? I should be able to show you one here. Look at this piece here. See this piece here? It's downside. And that was a sell setup downtrend right see that they made that thing go back up there and then downside pretty sure you know where they went right downside so when you see the same thing here which is very similar except this was a smaller one right you're seeing the same thing here and a bigger time frame downside don't worry that it's going up it's looking downside right so you can look for an opportunity. We'll look for an opportunity to sell it. Okay, so we got three waves in this and it's doing nothing, stay out of it. Nothing, nothing here really to, to do right now. So just stay out of it. Swiss yen, stay out of this one. It's going sideways as well. New Zealand CAD. New Zealand CAD, we're looking for a sell setup. Let's see if we got a sell setup. Okay, some of our traders should be in that trade. If you're in the trade, you want to move it to break even, the possibility for a one, two, three still exists. So if you took the trade today, you want to move that to break even now, right? Those of the, that is for my traders, those who took it. Aussie CAD, 
Aussie cat, wait, nothing to do here. Let's see. It's not, it's not, cons it's consolidating, but it's not going, right? We're still expecting Aussie cat to go down. The bigger trade in Aussie cat is still downside, right? We're still looking for this trade here. So remember, we got that trade. So we're looking, sorry, this piece here. We got this piece. So we're looking for this piece down now. Put that in a four hour. If they break, you want them to first break out. One of them make a flag and then you take the trade down. This would be a good trade to the downside, right? We got this one from here, right? So you can actually get a nice trade set up here. Watch for the sell setup. Ignore the buy, the buy is short term. And that means we can watch Aussie fall, right? We can watch Aussie take out the top and then fall, right? We can watch Aussie go to that top and then come right back down. So watch the Aussie and all the Aussie pairs. Aussie New Zealand going up because even though Aussie will be coming down, New Zealand will be coming down faster. Silver going up, but you want to be careful. There's a lot of divergence. The upside is limited right now. If you want to get into the upside, wait for it to finish what it's doing here. Wait for this to finish what it's doing there and let it pull back like this. Then you start to buy. Right? Don't buy silver now. Wait for silver to make a pullback and then get. Wait for them always to make a pullback and then get in the trade. Pull back and then get in the trade. Pull back and then get in the trade. It will pull back and then you get in the trade. Don't get in the silver where it is going up, but don't get into it where it is right now. If you're going to get in, it's a very, very short-term trade. right? We would like it to actually come back to this level and then take the trade. When you have the confirmation of this, then remember when silver was here, I was saying, be careful, this could be a flat to go up, this piece here. We were expecting one more down, and once we saw that structure, we said, okay, be careful. Structure is changing. Gold going up, the downside is going to happen, so you're going to get this piece coming down now. What happens when it comes down would be a question. You could get one more up from here. When they come here, you could get one more up or you could actually break through because we do have a lot of divergence here too, right? I think one more up is possible. They'll push one more up, do this, come here, do that, come here, get, give you one more up and then come down. So you could get one more up on silver as well, right? Let's see. Short term is a very short sell, don't, don't. I, the sell is, if you take the sell here, you gotta be careful with it, right? Because remember this one went up quite a lot. I wouldn't, I didn't think, we didn't take that sell this morning. We didn't like it. So we didn't get a structure like this to sell. So I decided to let's skip it. It's coming down, but that's okay. Let it go without us. We were looking for the setups that are perfect, right? Sometime you, your forecast says it's going to go there, but you don't get the setup, right? You missed the Aussie New Zealand stats. And she order was here. You missed that? No, no, not that. Nothing to do with the Aussie New Zealand. I didn't say do anything with the Aussie New Zealand. All right, the Aussie New Zealand. Sorry, sorry. Not the Euro New Zealand. The Aussie New Zealand. I think you're in this one too, right? What to do with this? I told you what to do with it. Move the stops. Move the stops in it. So send me a message in, in our room. I'm not sure what you want in the Euro. No, no, don't move the Euro New Zealand stops us yet. Send me a message in our room. After after the webinar, we look at it. Don't move the Euro New Zealand stops us yet. Wait until it gets to the top. Okay. Yep, go back. Send me a message in our, in our room and I'll, I'll tell you what to do with it. Yep. Let's go. So we're in the XAG. Let's go get back get back to the uh, gold. Watch for it. If you're in the short term, you want to move your stop. Well, keep your stop there and then live with a loss, if anything. But it could come back to this level, and then we'll see. I'll be more interested in the buy setup. Oil, let's see what oil is doing. Oil still kind of a giving a surprise. But oil has this, this, this very – I don't trade oil personally, but a lot of traders in my room do. Um, it has this complex structure developing here. Remember, we had this impulse. We thought this is going to go. Then we thought that is going to go. Then we thought this one is going to go. 
and none of them is going well. There's a chance they could do this and still come here. You're looking at a more complex corrective structure. And we know structures like this is not like, not that we don't know them, right? We know structures like that. So that is a possible. There's also possibility where the C wave did not go beyond the A. They've done that before and you have a complex structure. But in that case, you'll have to wait for them to break the top, wait for them to make a pullback and then buy. I would not buy here. It's dangerous to buy there because they will just do this and come right back down here, take you out and then go right back up, right? So you don't want to buy at the top there. You want to wait for a buy setup. But a sell setup, if we get from a top there, would be good, right? We can look for that sell setup. You can all pretty much same thing. Natural gas doing nothing. Stay out of it. If you're in the sell, you can move your stop. If not, stay out of it. You're coming to this low. Wait until they break either way. And if the S&P 500, for those who are in, remember that this small channel I show you, it's at the top of the channel. So if you're in the trade, move your stop. Get to somewhere here. They will can reverse or they can break out. I'm thinking reversal. Based on this pattern, 90% of those reverse. One in 10 break out. Now, this, this one has its own nature. So we don't know whether it's going to break out already because this is the first time I've seen this pattern in this chart. So we'll wait to see how they behave. Looks downside to me. So at this point, you can look for one more downside, right? Um, let's see. Aussie is falling. We'll go look at it just now. By the way, Bitcoin, remember this one, it's going to go up a little more and come down. Somebody asked me, so it did break downside. Bitcoin probably is going to consolidate here for a while. You may see some consolidation here, and then you could see more downside. I think more downside is definitely there. Some consolidation and more downside. Nifty, nothing much here. Some people ask me for it. Nothing much is just going up. It's slow but sure. You see, they make these, they go up. They make this, they go up. They make this, they go up. They make them more, they go up. They're going very slow but very sure. They keep crawling up. Right? So watch it. Somebody wanted the rubles. So let me do the copper. Let's see copper. Copper did give, you, give us a surprise. We were expecting copper to go one more down before they go up, one more down here, and then go up. Well, here's the thing. I just remember I just told you, if they don't break, we don't get a trade, right? It didn't break the structure, right? Wait for this breakout before you buy. Well, it didn't give you a breakout. We didn't get sell. We didn't get a sell set up. No need to worry about that, right? I don't know why anybody's freaking out. Well, we are not in the trade. I wasn't looking for a buy, and I will never look for a buy there. For me, this was a very short-term buy if I had taken it. A buy to go to this level and then come back down. Went up, changed the structure. Not that we weren't expecting the upside, but we weren't expecting from there. We thought they'll come down here and then go. So it's trending up. We want to buy it. We'll wait until this come back here before you buy. Wait for this to do this before you buy. Don't buy at the top. You could be surprised and watch it reverse back to the bottom. Do this and then go. So don't buy at the top. Wait for it to come back. I think that's about it. Somebody want the DAX. Somebody want uh, what else? The US Steel one, the X one. I think we did that once, right? I think somebody had asked me for this. Let me see how it's going. It's interesting. Okay, amazing, right? Good buy, by the way. Did you take the buy? Okay, some people did. Great. You're paying attention. Remember I said, watch it. It's going to make a flag and then break out, right? This pattern. One, two, three. There are, there are two things. It could come one more here or it could make a flag and break out. Well, they make the flag and they're breaking the structure. You are not going to get this anymore. You're going to get the upside. By the way, well, really, really nice structured. Well, we were looking at that flag a, a while back. I did not trade it, so I didn't follow it. Nice one. So if you take it now, you're doing well. Good trade. I don't know how you have to trade this long term, short term. I don't track this. Somebody just asked me and I said, wait for a flag and then buy if they break, right? It's easy. You wait for them to correct and then you take the trade up. This has very long term trade, by the way, if you're in the trade, because if they break this structure here, they're going to go back pretty high. Eventually, they're going to come back to about retest this level, maybe even a little higher. So it's not an ending diagonal because you only have three waves in it. Ending diagonals has five waves in it. It's more of an ABC and they're going up. It's a good one. I like this, by the way. I can't trade it, but it looks good. Yeah. 
New Zealand breakdown, that's expected. Don't worry with the Aussie. Don't trade the Aussie to the downside. Let me just look at Don't trade the Aussie to the downside as yet, please. Wait until it break and make a flag. Aussie could reverse and tag this stop and then come down. Don't trade the Aussie to the downside as yet. We'll let them break this structure. Let them make a flag and then go. New Zealand, you can trade. Sure, you can trade this to the downside. It depends on your strategy. I'm not telling you when to trade it, how to trade it. You have to have a strategy to do that, right? But I'm telling you the direction shows downside, right? That is, I can tell you. That's as much as I can tell you. The rest, you will have to have your own strategy. If you ask me where the entry is, I will say to you, don't trade it, right? It means you don't know what you're doing. That is simple. Remember, I told you guys, anybody who writes me, ask me where the entry is, I will say to them, don't trade it, right? Uh, Dow Jones, uh, if we start doing all of that, we will take a next hour for the webinar. Let me see if any of those charts I have on, I'll go to it. I don't think I have an, the czar. We have the czar on for you. You probably want to look for short-term upside. But I would probably wait for them to break the trend. I think that's a four-hour trend to the downside, right? Yeah, short-term upside, but you will want to let them break that trend first. Right, because if they don't break the trend, they're going to come down, come down, come down some more. So short-term upside, but just watch it. This could be very short. I think the downside is more dominant right now. It's very slow. It's not very tradable. I don't like it. I wouldn't trade it. Right? So DAX. Okay, let's do the DAX. What is the DAX code? I don't think I have it here. What's the code? Give me the code very fast. Oh, this one, we have it. I think this one you're looking for, DE30, right? You're looking for this. Upside. We're looking for this upside. Somebody was showing this. Let's see what it's looking like. You're getting upside. You're getting upside. I think you're getting a consolidation here. You could still go some more up. Let's see what the daily looks like. Yep, this is over. This is going up. I think one of our traders trading this. This is going up more. You're going to get more upside into it. You may get a consolidation here now. You may get some, be careful, you may get some kind of a consolidation in here and then you can look more upside. It's in an uptrend going. All right? So one hour, let's see what the one hour looks like. One hour you're going up, but you want to be careful if you're in the one hour upside because this at any point could start to make a third wave down for a one, two, three, and then you go up. So be careful of that if you're in the trade already. Okay, what are the trades? Pong USD, Pong USD, stay out of it for a while. It's it's not going anywhere right now. We're looking for a little more upside. What's your view for pair cor correlation? It doesn't exist. There's nothing like correlation in the market. Forget about it. Anybody who tells you that doesn't it does not hasn't done enough research on what correlation really is. Look at look at the look at the, the the just look at the charts. Take any two charts, put them on top of each other. See are they correlated? Correlated means they should move pr proportionately to each other. That's you can actually calculate it, right? You can put you can put a formula to that. Look at what Aussie and New Zealand is doing. They're going opposite direction. They go together sometimes. They go opposite sometimes. Those are two separate economies, right? If the Aussie come out and said, "Hey, we found gold." New Zealand dollar will not go up because of that. Aussie dollar may go up because they found gold. What has that got to do with what's happening in New Zealand or what's happening in China? It doesn't make a difference, right? They found gold. If they found gold in, on, on New, in, 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 in New Zealand, then probably the New Zealand dollar will get stronger. It has nothing to do with what's happening in Aussie, right? They can't be correlated. They're not the same economy. It's just not possible. I think what people are missing for correlation is when another currency is, is relating to them. So let's say the Pong is falling. Well, yes, you can expect the Pong New Zealand and the Pong Oz to actually get stronger in relationship to the Pong, but that's not correlation. That is the Pong falling, right? Just understand the concepts as they are. If dollar is falling, everything with the dollar in it is going to get strong in relationship to the dollar. It doesn't mean they're, they're correlated to, to, to it. It's just that they're all, they happen to be on the other side of the dollar and that means they're going to get strong, right? Soya beans is not correlated to New Zealand dollar, but because you buy soya beans, you buy soya in, in, in US dollar 
And if the US dollar gets weak, the price of soya will go up. So is the price of Aussie dollar if you buy it in US dollar. It's just that it has nothing to do with correlation. I think a lot of new traders, you you know, people sell these terminologies and thing out there as if it's a must and they come, it's 80% correlated. So what does that mean? It's 20% correlated, it's 30, it's like nonsense. It's just saying things. But it's like people read some things on, on the internet and they don't question what they read. They, it's all about knowledge, guys. It's not, it's not about nonsense, it's about knowledge. And knowledge are things that you can actually prove. You can do research in them, you can test them, you can see whether it works, right? Gaps don't really change the structure. Gap is price movement. If you have a gap, price moves, right? So it doesn't really change. It's become part of the structure. I will upload it a little later. So, okay, guys. I think today was basically just showing you trades you can possibly look for in, in this week coming up, right? I like the New Zealand most. I think, you, you know, I like New Zealand. You're New Zealand. Aussie New Zealand. I like those trades more, right? It's recorded, it will be uploaded on YouTube. You can share the YouTube link because a lot of people telling me that they come and, oh, I just saw your YouTube link for the first time. I'm like, wow, it's there for more than a year, right? So if you guys can share it, you will help somebody else to see it because most people who see it are amazed by what they see. It's not because of me, it's because of the method I'm using. People keep saying, how do you know it's gonna go up? Well, it's easy, it's not about me. I don't have a crystal ball, right? It's about the method that I use to analyze the chart. If you can use the same method, you would see exactly what I see. But if you're using a different method, then you don't see what I see. You're seeing what your method shows you. And it's that simple. It's not, not about me, right? It's just that this is the method. That's it, right? If you use this method, you would see exactly what I see. Yes, we teach you how to do that in, in, in our course. That's somebody's asking how to count the Elliott wheels. We teach you how to do that. You will be surprised that we do it pretty different from most people. Why I do this free? A good question. Somebody asked. I think a lot of people ask me why you do this free. Here is the deal. Why you post charts that are good setups in TradingView for free? There are thousands and there are over half a million traders in TradingView. Most of them are trading an account that is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. No matter how much I warn them that, it, you know, you are likely not going to make a lot of money out of that. It's not up to me. They will still trade. So the best I can do as a trader is to say to them, guys, use good money management. Watch these charts where they're going. I can guide you. I can help you to show you where it's going. I can come every week and say, you need to learn, 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 learn. People write me. I would like to take your course, but I don't have the money. I said, that's not a problem. Keep learning, go, go read this book, learn this, learn that, watch it my charts, watch it the webinar, watch it other people's charts and webinar. Learn, learn, learn until you find a way out, right? Just keep learning. And I hope th these webinars are helping a lot of people from not losing their account. They may not be very successful with it, but at least they will not lose their account. If you use the money management scheme I give you, you will never lose your account, right? It's free, just go watch the record. And if you follow that, you will never lose your account. That's the whole point. That was the whole point of, you know, let traders. There are a lot of people who would never take my course. Simply, they cannot afford it. I, I'm very, very much aware of that. And I don't accept people with small accounts because I know that they will just not afford it and they'll be in my room and they'll be worried about it because traders are making good money and they're not making good money. But you can help. Why not? All of us can help. If all of us go in trading view and, and share our ideas, we may help somebody. If you help one person, you have done something good in your life. Traders just need help. They, they just can't, you know, and they're trying. Some people go with $100 and hope to get rich. You can tell the guy with $100 that he's not going to get rich, that he's not going to make a lot of money. He will still give it a try, right? So the, word, the best you can do for him is said, okay, watch this chart. This is a good one. This may give you a winning trade, right? That's about it. You can say, okay, what, focus your, your $100, $20 you can risk or $10 you can risk on the New Zealand. Right? Don't risk it all over the place because you're likely going to lose. Yep, somebody just posed the money management one there for you. Great. So that's the whole point. And I like what I'm doing. I really like what I'm doing. So thank you for coming. I'll see all of you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.